Beside the well-traveled roads between the camps and the Valley of Mines, one will occasionally stumble upon places which are engulfed by mystery. In this episode, we will take a closer look at these and try to comprehend what their purpose was to unveil their hidden history. While many of those locations are not involved in quests, they hold a great importance to the world building of the colony. Grab your sword, some meat bark ragu, and let me take you on a little journey to the lesser known locations of the Mine Valley. In the east, where the waves clash against the towering mountains, a decrepit ruin watches over the endless ocean. A long time ago, monks and scholars called these derelict buildings their home, but only legends remain, and rumors of shape-shifting men are all what is left. Massive statues of orcish warriors stand tall among the ruins, even guarding the pedestal on which a focus, the tool once used to create the magic dome, was placed. A lofty watchtower, crumbling walls, the main gate and a platform high up in the mountains is all that's left of the monastery. Snappers and even a troll made the courtyard their home, defending the remnants of this lost civilization. Venturing deeper into the depths of the monastery, the tunnels hold secrets within its damp darkness. The gloom seems to move and the faint growls of a shadow beast standing sentinel over the last remaining door can be heard from afar. Behind, one will find a study room, completed with an alchemy lab and shelves full of ancient books. The treasure in the monastery holds a very special kind of magic. Scrolls of shape-shifting. These spells are usually associated with the god Adonos. In the mainland of Mertana, druids and rangers use this magic to transform themselves into beasts of the wildlife. But it is also known that the orcs were once part of Adonos' creation before Beliar, god of darkness, subdued them. Maybe Orcus shamans once inhabited this place, praising their original god and performing his magic of transformation. The statues within the ruins would strengthen this theory, but those could also be placed there afterwards, when the humans left. The evidence of transformation magic, however, makes it clear that this place was once a home to believers of the god of balance and water, no matter if they were in fact of human or orcish nature. Deep in the east, beyond the dark forests of the coastal region, a sight is to behold. Above the wreckage and the sands, a tall rock is crowned with an old tower. As one enters, the faint glow of torches can be seen emitting from the winding stair leading into the depths. Soon the brick walls turn into crudely carved out rooms which go still deeper under the earth. The tunnels strongly resemble mine shafts now and the living dead patrol the gloom. Many edits lead into dead ends in this underground maze, but eventually the area opens up and a chamber appears in the dimly lit darkness. Skeletons of past warriors, risen by a powerful undead mage, now stand their ground down here, ready to defend their master. Behind this chamber of bones, the shafts lead into a small cove, and the salty air of the ocean greets anyone who survived the tunnels. A small pier, rotten and half immersed by the sea, leads to the conclusion that maybe once the magic ore was won under the tower and then dispatched by a boat. It is very likely that the whole tower complex was once a smuggler's den, where the ore was secretly exported to unknown locations while hiding from the king's troops. Among the treasure the skeletons guarded, a book can be found. The enigmatic Chromanine. 
Riddles lead the nameless hero through the colony, and at the end, where it all began, in the mine shafts under the fog tower, a freshly slain corpse of a man can be found. The Stranger. Chromanin seems to be no man, but rather a thing, an idea or an event which is achieved by spiritually ascending or through becoming righteous. The stranger wanted a worthy individual to find him, to share his knowledge with, but unfortunately, his demise was faster than the hero. This very vague mission ends here, but leaves us only with more questions and doesn't even answer how this tower came to its name. The reason why it is called the Fog Tower is long forgotten, but untold tales speak of a brass gong which was placed on top and was hit in regular intervals to guide the lost through the mists of the eastern woods. The winding canyons of the valley are home to many natural formations like caves. Some of them, however, are very peculiar. Parts of these caverns are sealed off by a man-made wall with a wooden door leading into a small room. These fortified caves are mostly found in the southern and western parts of the mine valley. Some of them are located deep within the Orkish territory. Due to the sophisticated nature of the items and furniture found inside and the very structure itself, it is safe to exclude an Orkish origin. The existence of doors affirmed this theory since the Corinus Orcs have a very crude and simple architecture with entrances like this nowhere to be found. With this in mind, a human origin of these structures becomes very likely. The only cave which is actively used during the time of the barrier is the one next to Cavalorn's hut. While most of the doors can be opened with lockpicks, this one requires a key which is found in a chest next to the arrow selling shadow. Since a bow is found inside this one, it is safe to assume that Cavalorn used it as a storage room. The other caves are deserted, some of them even full of spider webs. Back in the days when no barrier existed, they could have been used as some form of stations where hunters or soldiers had been located. Many ruins and buildings date back to the first Orc Wars, and they very well could have been part of the human expeditions under King Roba I. It is possible that they were extensions of the main fortress in the middle of the valley, which later served the Ore Barons. Their purpose was possibly to secure the lines in the periphery to keep an eye on the Orcs of the mountains. Like the fortified caves, lone watchtowers can be found in the southwestern parts of the valley, deep in the Orcish territory. The tower close to Cavalorn's encampment shares the same architectural style as the old camp castle, and although it lays in ruins, it shows that it had multiple levels with wooden floors, most likely once climbable with the help of a ladder. This tower was therefore certainly built around the same time the old camp fortress was constructed and its builders were certainly of human nature. The other watchtowers are different in their style and they have no interior. The crude craftsmanship and their location even deeper inside the Orkish area, one of them right at the sleeper temple, makes it clear that these outposts had been erected by the Orcs. The time of their construction, however, lies in mystery, and could even date back to a time when the brutish hordes roamed the whole valley long before the arrival of the king's troops. If an adventurous wanderer heads to the south of Cavalorn's Lodge, he will find himself on a dangerous path full of snappers and bloodthirsty lizards. With natural caves and a pond to the left of the path, and an abandoned encampment to the right, the way leads down deeper into the canyon. A crude gate guarded by two orc warriors leading into an open space sheltered by the mountains 
which can only be defined as an ancient arena. Stands surround the sandy soil on which one spectators observe the brutal fights taking place here. Two large statues and pillars with orcish runes stand tall on top of the stands and seem to emphasize the ritualistic importance of this place. In the center of the stands, a chamber is hewn into the solid stone ages ago. The dimly lit interior is very reminiscent of the architecture of the sleeper temple and an octagonal pit with a pillar rising to the ceiling makes this structure even more mysterious. One can only imagine which occult rituals took place on these cold stones. Sitting on a mountainous throne just south of the old camp, an old citadel lies in ruins. Orcish scouts scour these highlands and make it a dangerous region for convicts wandering too far. Up here, the nameless hero encounters the outcast orc shaman Urshak for the first time and on another occasion searches these ruins for a long lost book of the mysterious stranger, Chromanin. While being relatively small, it is speculated that this building once served a militaristic purpose. In the German version, it is called Das Alte Castell, which roughly translates to the Old Ford or the Old Castellum, while in the English version, it is known as the Old Citadel or Citadel Ruins. A Castellum was a small Roman military fort in which troops were deployed and a citadel serves a similar purpose as a defensive facility. The word citadel comes from the Italian word cittadella, which means little city. Beside those facts, there is not much information on this peculiar ruin. There is also a small button the hero can press in the wall and the ground floor collapses afterwards, revealing a lower area with a little treasure inside and another mechanism to make the pillars in the middle rise up again, serving as some form of elevator. Speculations arise when you examine the deed that Lester seeks in the mountain fort in the southern mountains. Once, the Valley of Mines belonged to a count called Bergma, who was in possession of the land a long time ago, before the magic barrier was created. This could be one of his abodes, or a fort for his soldiers. Whatever it may be, its very existence is shrouded again in mystery. I hope you liked this little journey through the colony, and if you have any other additional information, let us know in the comments. With this episode coming to an end, I wish you a good one, and take care when wandering through the Valley of Mines.